Okay, so get ready to put your math skills to work to solve this interesting little math word problem. Matter of fact, let me go ahead and read the problem. It is the following. You invested $7,000 for 10 years at 5% annual compound interest. How much money did you earn on this investment? Okay, so that is the question. Feel free to use a calculator. And also, feel free to look up whatever formulas you need to look up for this problem. And I'll go ahead and give you a bit of a hint. You're going to need to understand a formula about compound interest. And you need to be very careful here because there's different uh, formulas when it comes to working with compound interest. But of course, I'll explain all of this in the solution. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the right answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'll fully explain how to solve this problem. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need assistance in learning mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so just one more time, so you go to your local bank or uh, financial inst uh, institution and you're saying, hey, I have $7,000, right? You already made that money from your job or maybe someone gave this to you as a gift, but uh, you have the $7,000 and you want to invest it for 10 years or you intend to invest it for 10 years at a rate of 5% annual compound interest. So the question is what? How much money did we earn on our investment. And you gotta be very careful here in terms of what the question is asking, but let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. The correct answer is the following. All right, so we took this $7,000 and in 10 years um, uh, investing at 5% annual compound interest, our investment is worth after this uh, 10 years past $11,410. And $11, so how much money did we earn on this investment? That is the question, right? Not how much is the investment worth at the end of those 10 years, how much money did we earn? Well, we already had the $7,000, right? Uh, before we even put it into this investment. Now our investment is worth this much uh, money after 10 years. So what we made, what we earned on this investment is the difference, okay? Which is $4,410. But if you just put down $11,410, I would say, yeah, that's okay. I'd probably, just because I'm such a nice guy and maybe a pushover as a teacher, I'd still might give you like maybe an A minus, but really uh, this is the correct answer, $4,410. But if you got this right, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, we have to celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you could brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of working with compound interest, at least basic compound interest prompts. And that's what this is because compound interest is a huge topic. And really this topic uh, falls under uh, the category of exponential growth, exponential functions. And I know I'm going to get this quote wrong, but uh, I should know this actually by heart. But Albert Einstein once said, let me kind of erase this here, um, that compound interest, I believe he said something to the effect that it's like the eighth wonder of the world. It's like magical, right? So pretty much everyone out there has heard of the, uh, the magic of um, compound interest, especially when it comes to investing. Now, let's just kind of talk about what uh, compound interest is. And I said this has to do with something called exponential growth. Now, what uh, what is exponential growth? Well, I'm just going to tell you very briefly. So when you have a function, matter of fact, let me just write it this way, a function, and uh, the variable, okay, is in the exponent location of a power. So here is a power 2 to the third power. 3 is the exponent. 2 is the base. The entire thing is a power. But when we have an exponent, okay, uh, right up here, a little like x, uh, in the exponent location, we're talking about an exponential function. So to figure out the value of this, uh, we just put in various numbers of uh, values of x, right? So when x is 1, well, this is uh, just 2 to the first power or 2. When x is 2, well, then we have 2 squared or 4. When x is 3, we have what? 
well, that's going to be 8. When x is 4, we have 16. When x is 5, we have 32. And when x is 6, now I'm going to stop myself here, we have 64. But what's going on is that these values, as we increase uh, the value of x by just 1, we're going from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the value of y, the value of the function, is increasing more uh, rapidly. And we can see this graphically here in a second. Of course, I want to get to the solution uh, to this problem, but it's important to kind of frame what's going on. But exponential growth kind of looks like this. Here's our y-axis. Here's our x-axis. It starts off very slow, like so. Now, of course, I'm just kind of um, using some sort of just generic kind of model for it. But our functions start off very slow like this. And then over time, they really, really pick up speed. And that's what's going on with investing. When you um, hear things like, oh, if you invest you know, $100 every month in a uh, particular account that's guaranteed to give you a uh, rate of return of 7% you know, annualized, you know, yeah, your money is going to grow slow at first, but then that nest egg is really going to reach kind of critical mass. And then at the end of that time, it's really going to pick up momentum. And that's what compound interest is about or exponential uh, growth is about. So anyways, that's the big picture uh, in this particular video. But uh, let's get into this problem. And as I promised, we need a formula. And there's different formulas uh, when it comes to compound interest. And this is the one that you need to have because we're talking about annual compound interest. In other words, we're compounding. Uh, the interest being applied to this investment is happening annually. Okay. So in other words, right here, annual compound interest. We could have quarterly or biannually, or we can even have continuous compound interest. And those uh, require different formulas. So this is the, kind of the most basic um, formula when it comes to compound interest or annual compound interest. So hopefully uh, use this form. Even if you used another formula, uh, and if you know if you knew how to work with that formula, you still should be able to uh, figure this problem out. But this is a formula that you should uh, understand if you want to work with compound interest. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. We have a is equal to p times one plus r. All this to the t. Again, we have some sort of variable in the exponent uh, uh, location here, or the exponent spot, uh, meaning that this is an exponential function. Okay, so let's uh, talk about what uh, each of these variables uh, mean. Okay, so let's start off with P here. P is the principal. That's the amount that you have before you even invest, right? So you worked really hard, you know, uh, saved up your money, and you have $7,000. That's your money to invest. That's the principal amount. Now, after this investment, you're going to end up with a return, hopefully, right? And that total return is A. Okay, that's how much you're going to have in your account after a set amount of time of investing. So again, this uh, principal amount is the money you already you have. You go to your financial institution after a set period of time, uh, that investment grows to this amount, which is A. Now let's talk about this uh, other variable here, T. That is our time in years. So this particular formula, the time is in years. So if you were talking about days, you would have to convert that those days into years. So you got to be very careful about the units of measure here. And of course, uh, the principal and the amount can be whatever, uh, you know, currency that you want. I'm going to be using dollars. Okay. All right. Now let's talk about R. R is the interest rate. Okay. So that's what R is. And in this particular problem, it's 5% annual compound interest. And the key here is that we need to express this interest rate as a decimal. So 5% as a decimal, how do we go from a decimal, I'm sorry, a percent to a decimal? Well, easy, all we have to do is divide by 100 or just move that uh, decimal point over two places to the left, so that's 0 0.05. Okay, so basically, this is the formula, and what do we have? Well, we have the time, right? That's 10 years. We have the interest rate that is uh, 5%. We have our principal amount, which is 7,000, and with all that information, we can figure out uh, what our investment it will be worth after uh, this period of time. But keep in mind that I could have given you this prom in a different way. I could have said, uh, you made, here, let's kind of go back up to the original problem. I could have said something to the effect like, um, after 10 years of investing, or no, 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 I take that back. Um, 
you made this amount, you start off with $7,000 and you made this amount of money at a 5% annual compound interest. How many years was this uh, invested? How many years did you have this money in the bank? And now that's a really kind of a poorly worded problem, but basically I could have given you the A, the, the P variable amounts and the R, and I would have asked you to solve for T. Okay, so in this particular uh, situation, we have P, R, and T. We're going to calculate A, but if you're asked to solve for T, okay, uh, in other words, we're looking for the variable in the exponent spot, well, this particular problem would require the use of logarithms. So uh, when it comes to compound interest problems or exponential function problems, uh, there's the various levels of it. So this particular level of math could be something that, you know, um, those of you that are like in a basic algebra one course should be able to handle. But if you're solving for this variable t here, you may have to be like in an algebra two course because you typically don't uh, study logarithms, you know, in algebra one. That's what we need in order to solve for t. Just a little quick comment uh, there because some of you may be looking to learn how to solve compound interest problems and uh, you're going to be solving for the variable in the exponent spot. So you need, you know, more math power, more math skills. But let's go ahead and get into the rest of this problem. And uh, now that we understand what the formula is and what, uh, you know, um, the variables stand for, we could just kind of just look through the problem. We invested or you invested $7,000. Well, that's our principal amount, $7,000 uh, for 10 years. Well, our time is 10 years at 5% annual compound interest, so our rate is 5%, but as a decimal, that's 0 0.05, so we can calculate uh, the uh, total amount uh, earned or the total amount of this investment after 10 years, and then we could take the difference to figure out how much we earn. So let's go ahead and do that right now. But before we do that, I'm going to ask you to do this, and that is quickly hit that subscribe button. I need your support. You know, I've been on YouTube for a long time, well over 10 years. I have uh, now, I think, about uh, 2,500 plus videos from basic math to advanced math and, and everything in between. And every single video is a labor of love. You know, I got to come up with these problems, think about it, do everything, because I just love teaching math. So many people out there struggle in uh, math. And if I can make a difference, and right now, unfortunately, it doesn't look good for uh, you know math scores, okay, internationally. That is in terms of uh, math proficiency. You know, it just seems like every year uh, people understand less and less math, and that's kind of crazy because technology and you know uh, the need to understand math is increasing. All right, and I just don't get that. But if I could do my part and try to help people, you know, that's what drives me uh, to do this channel. But I need your support. Uh, so I can reach more people. And the best way to support my channel is simply hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, you might as well hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's get back to this problem. Here is our formula. Now let's go ahead and plug in all the um, values for these respective variables. So again, P here is $7,000. That's our principal amount. Our uh, rate, okay, our annual uh, compound interest rate is 5%, but, but we got to use a decimal, so that's 0 0.05, a decimal value for that percentage. Uh, 10 is going to be 10 years. Remember, this time it's got to be in years. Got to be very careful there. So we have everything here. So we have 7,000 times 1 plus, uh, 1 plus 0 0.05, all this taken to the 10th power. So the first things first, remember, we got to keep all this basic stuff in mind, like the order of operations, PEMDAS, right? So we have to go to P or parentheses first right here. So what's inside those parentheses? Well, we got to add 1 plus uh, 0 0.05. Of course, that's going to be 1.05. So that is our first step. Now, what is our next step? E powers, right? So now we got to take 1.05 to the 10th power. Now, you'd be surprised as a teacher even at the Algebra 2 level, I have seen this mistake a million times where I've seen students take 7,000 and then multiply by 1.05, for example. They're doing multiplication for powers, okay? So you got to be very careful, got to keep the basics uh, in mind. So we have to do this first. So uh, 1.05 to the 10th power. So to figure this out, just in case you don't know how to do this, you got to make sure you know how to use your calculator. So it's either going to be like a carrot key like this or y to the x or x to the y key, some sort of function like that, but make sure you understand 
how to find powers in your calculator. But when we take 1.5, uh, 1.05, excuse me, to the 10th power, we're going to get 1.628 or something or the other. But I'm going to round it off to 1.63. And now finally, we can multiply by 7,000 and our amount is $11,410. Okay, so we invested $7,000 for 10 years at 5% annual compound interest. And uh, our investment is worth $11,410. But the question was what? The question was, you got to be very careful here, how much money did we earn? Okay, so we didn't, you know, we already had that $7,000. The investment didn't uh, earn that uh, for us, right? So what we made on the investment, we have to go down here, is we'll take this amount, the total amount, subtract away from our principal. So we made $4,410. Okay, so hopefully this all made sense. Now, if you are studying compound interest, it all depends on what level of math you're in, right? So again, a problem like this would be like a basic algebra problem. But uh, for those of you that are in more advanced math, like college algebra, algebra 2, or pre-calculus, uh, there is definitely more sophisticated type of compound interest problems that you, uh, you know, will be studying. Now, if you need help beyond this, check out my math courses. If you're in Algebra 2, I teach you, you know, more advanced compound interest problems or exponential growth and exponential decay uh, problems in those um, courses, all my courses. If you're in pre-calculus, you can go there. Uh, if you're in Algebra 1, you'll see these type of problems. But whatever you do, if you're studying some, anything in math, whether it's compound interest, systems, equations, doesn't make a difference, make sure you get the help you need to understand. The worst thing you could do is hope that it's all going to get better all on its own. Okay, so please, let's together raise that math proficiency across, uh, you know, uh, whatever country you might be in or whatever the case is. And, uh, you know, again, that's why I'm so passionate about teaching. If I can do a little bit of a, you know, uh, make an impact on it, well, I think maybe in some tiny, tiny, small way, maybe I can make the world a tiny little bit better. But anyways, hopefully this video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.